which is the final letter here okay it's all wonderful stuff it's all it's all cabalistic but basically every single thing in this entire of creation it doesn't matter which way you look at it it's all very simple every last thing every last letter of the entire torah is all is only for one thing there's only one goal in the entire of creation that's to reveal the name yod here well here and every single last thing that we can possibly study or read or anything all the numbers always ultimately point to a revelation of the name yod here well here there is nothing else beside that uh, Moshiach is there to point towards the revelation of the name yod heh wow the glory of the name yod heh wow -Heh. Okay, every last thing. Um, there's nothing that departs from that revelation. If it did depart from that revelation, it's wrong. It's not Torah. Okay, so there's one revelation ultimately and everything is linked into that. So like I say, this is linked into the letter Vav okay and well also the letter um here you know knesset yisrael is is related to the to letter a here but in terms of yisrael being yakov that's rela related to the letter vav and then like i say that's the channel between heaven and earth that's related to yosef which is yes the foundation the righteous one okay um that's part of the letter vav and then we've got this, which is absolutely wonderful, until when Shiloh shall come. So, um, I do believe Shiloh has got an odd and 48. Um, let me just check that one out. Um, 21, 31, 43, 48, yeah. So, Shiloh's got an odd and 48. So, we can see how Shiloh is connected to Yosef, Zion. But it's also connected here. Yod Heh Wow Heh Elohim and Yona and then back up to heart because this is a multiple of 16. Okay. We're going to have a look at this number though because this number is utterly fascinating. Until when Shiloh comes, let's look at what potentially is hindering this process until Shiloh comes. Because Shiloh really, I've gone over this loads and loads and loads. Shiloh is an umbrella term for the, all those five aspects of Mashiach that are contained within the cup of blessing. So I've said that the five hands that surround the cup of salvation, the cup of blessing, uh, are connected to the five lit strong leaves that surround the rose, the 13 petal rose, which is Knesset Yisrael. Okay, so 462 is related to that. Um, let's go and have a look. It's quite fascinating. Here, here we go. Again, these are the five thorns. These are the five aspects of the anti mashiach if you like. Um, the five aspects, the five thorns. So they're the five types of the era of Rav. The initial letters spell Neger Ra, which means evil plague. I go on this all the time. So that's the ordinal. Sorry, that's the regular. That's the ordinal. Come to 462. Um, 393 however is Shiloh uh, Shiloh's 400, 345 exactly the same as Mashiach and then they added the 40, 345 added the 48 that was just said um, Shiloh's the ordinal of 48 comes to 393 so Shiloh is opposite this in every way and we can see that as well through that you know until when Shiloh comes you know, is also 462, okay? So massive, massive connections between this whole concept of the thorns, the five thorns that provoke um, Knesset Israel until that rectification has occurred. And what rectification? Until we have rectified our doubts and all the concealments, all the lies that we've inherited, all the evil that we've... Um, been exposed to that is 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 not been fully um, rectified to a revelation of the name Yod Heh Wow Heh. So we've got these thorns provoking us until we do. Um, anyway, they're not very it's not very pleasant to experience any aspect of darkness or any aspect of evil or be bitten by the serpent in any way. But we all are, and it's and it's, and it's unavoidable until we are corrected and perfected. Um, may that come very soon.
because we are absolutely we have had enough i have i've i've suffered enough i don't know about other people i have suffered enough i have seen enough suffering i want this evil to be no more i want the revelation of the name yod -Heh -Wah -Heh and nothing else beside him you know i am tired of these concealments and i and I, and and i would like to see his glory revealed you know as the waters cover the sea um, the knowledge of the glory of yod -Heh -Wah -Heh, as the waters cover the sea um, but instead until that moment we've got to fight against this so the five letters these are the initial letters of the Erev Rav Nun Gimel Ayin Resh Ayin so that stands for Nephilim, Gibberim, Anakim, Rephaim and Amalekim this is the worst one okay these are the, what's called the Mispah Gadol um, when the mem is 600 rather than 40 okay so these are the mispag doll numberings um but this is very telling because negarite is evil plague and that's exactly what you, the entire of humanity is facing this wickedness at this time so we will come back to this concept of negara because this is the time where everything is starting to happen you know this is the time where mashiach can be revealed it's we are in the time where we can hasten the fi final redemption we have reached that time now um we have never been at this time um until now but now we are seeing the signs of the end which is this evil plague we know that the end has come because all the evil which is it's operated very in very secret ways so up until now most of the evil governance in this world has happened in a very secret way like through secret societies and you know in just secret um you know they've they put a face on of government and like you know people have got democracy and it's really all rubbish it's all you know deep state controlled stuff and it's all been done in secret it's all been done through secret societies and things like that and um, evil has been the evil really that has been running the world and um, dominating the world and doing great wickedness against humanity has all been done in secret but now it's exposing itself and while when it exposes itself so too Mashiach and so too the name yod -Heh -Wah -Wah will be revealed just as the evil is revealed and we know in what way is the entire um in entire evil governance and evil regime in wh which way will it be revealed will it be revealed through an evil plague what if we what we're now facing the evil plague i talk about this all the time full regular then is this if you add all these regular numbers up okay the regular numbers it comes to that if you add the ordinals up okay which is each letter in the order of the aleph bet it comes to 401 what's 401 nachash serpent so nachash is exactly the same as mashiach regularly but it's got an ordinal of 43 which is asaph and the concept of asaph will come up in this lesson asaph is really our unrefined desire to receive for the sake of ourself we've got to transform the desire to receive for ourselves in the for, from the desire to receive for ourselves that leads to death it's like a physical lust we've got to want to receive receive what we've got to want to receive what your hey wow desires to bestow upon us and he desires to bestow a great deal he desires to reveal himself completely to us and we need a vessel that is capable of being able to receive a great amount a great abundance and um asaph is the aspect of us that desires to receive uh which is our body our soul is altruistic it desires to give but yod -Heh -Wah -Heh wants to give so he needs something that desires to receive the unfortunate thing about asav or our bodies or the nations it or you know the um physical aspect of reality is that it wants to receive for selfish purposes this needs to be refined to be want to receive for the sake of bringing pleasure to our creator simply because he desires more to give than what even we desire to receive okay so we've got to transform our lower base natures for a holy purpose okay and they become the vessels of shalom
that are able to receive and I talk about this all the time there's different ways of looking at these and understanding this concept of the vessel of the vessels of shalom and um, we can all we can understand that in a microcosmic level in our own lives but then there's a way that that's interpreted in a macrocosmic way that's um, very much associated with the three main religions uh, I've talked about this before, the light of the name yod heh wow -He, and the Vessels of Shalom. I've done teachings on that. You can go listen to what the, macro, um, the macrocosmic level looks like. It looks like a lot like what yod heh wow has been doing in this world at this time throughout the entire 6,000 years of history, specifically the last 2,000 years where we've been going through a really major process of refinement in order to reveal the concept of Mashiach through which the concept of yod heh wow -He, the name of yod heh wow -He is revealed. Okay, so we, this serpent is Esav unrectified. Rectified? This is the vessels of Shalom that we need. Like I say, we're going to talk about Esav. The Mashiach has descended into Esav in order to overwhelm it and transform it from um something evil i.e the serpent that bites us and leads us to death into something positive that that will ultimately be able to receive that that you have out fear you take why we desire to bestow upon us so as we can see the erev rav this is the unholy opposite the serpent the represent the serpent as opposed to mashiach which is represented by the five aspects of his name ultimately the name yod heh wah the five aspects of the name yod heh wah which are the five aspects of the Mashiach the opposite the five types of Erev Rav so you've got a Mashiach ben David, Mashiach ben Yosef, Moshe, Yaakov and Sarach Bat Asher or you know Sarach Bat Asher I did a teaching about Sarach Bat Asher and Rachel but like I've said before Rachel was cursed Sarach Bat but cursed by Yaakov and um, she was cursed to death and whereas Sarach Bat Asher was, uh, was blessed with eternal life. So there's got to be some unity. Sarach Bat Asher really is, is um, uh, I would say, like an incarnation of Rachel. But when she is blessed, you know, as opposed to be cursed. So there has got to be some unity between the concept of Rachel, who represents Malkuth, the final letter here of the name yod heh wow -He, and one of the aspects of the um, Mashiach. There's got to be unity between Rachel and Srachbat Asher for that reason. Rachel was cursed to death and the words of the Sadiq will always stand. So in somehow, um, that's why there's such a massive connection within, um, there's such a massive connection between Srachbat Asher, um, Yosef and Yaakov. Okay, but it's it's in order to overcome that curse that was that Yaakov, uh, that Rachel was cursed with she we need a we need a kingdom that will last forever not one that will die like what we've got now we need a kingdom a malkuth that will last forever okay so we've got to bear these these things in mind you've got to see what's written in the torah and what the provision was made for uh, overcoming that that's written in the torah and it's very clear that the provision was Sarah Bat asher and she's an aspect of um the mashiach but like i say only because of Rachel, uh, she's some kind. She's definitely, absolutely, completely, totally connected. So here we've got this connection, haven't we, to the hundred and twelve? Until when Shiloh shall come. So we know this is connected to the Negara, evil plague. Okay. Um, for some reason, just just wait a minute. Right, just tidy that up a little bit. Right, I've put this note over here, 474, that is Da'ath, okay, what is understanding, that is Da'ath, is the supernal Da'ath, is the whole concept of the Mashiach, to know yod heh wow -He. okay, the knowledge of yod heh wow -He is attained through um, the concept of supernal Da'ath, which really is representing Mashiach or Moshe. Okay, so what stands in the way, um, you know, the Erev Rav. <laughs> if we don't have Mashiach there, we will have the Erev Rav instead. Okay, and Erev Rav comes to 474. 
okay the actual word erev rav which is the mixed multi means mixed multitude comes to 474 okay i might just include that okay so i've included erev rav which is 474 and also da'ath knowledge so da'ath is the way that we is the level of like moisha represents supernal da'ath uh, supernal like uh, elevated da'ath holy da'ath okay so if we haven't got a concept of the mashiach a united concept of the mashiach which is known through the concept of shiloh we're going to look at that in a minute then we will have this there instead which is the erev rav which represents the serpent and i've gone through this before i've there's a a, a picture of um you know like one of the mummies with a serpent on the forefront of the head you know if we don't have knowledge of the Mashiach, we won't have knowledge of the name yod heh wow -He because the Mashiach basically represents his name. It says yod heh wow -He is one and his name is one. Okay, so obviously there's a distinction between yod heh wow -He and his name. His name is how he makes his infinite essence known to us because we can't possibly know yod heh wow -He and his infinite essence. We can only know that, that 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 which has been made known. We can only have knowledge of yod heh wow -He, um, in the way that he has made himself known to us, which is through the concept of the Mashiach, what stands in the way, Erev Rav. Okay, that stands in the entire way, the entire revelation of the name yod heh wow -He. Okay, and everything to do with it is all connected to the concept of the serpent. Right, so we've got this here, this 574 is 474 plus 100. We're going to see what why 100 is important when we go and analyze Shiloh. So like I said, this is a, the, the Shiloh is a, an umbrella term for the, all the five aspects of the Mashiach. Just as you've got five aspects of Erev Rav that represent an obscure, and re, represent a concealment of the name yod heh -Wow So you've got five aspects of Mashiach that represent a revelation of the name yod heh -Wow Let's have a look. So this is where it comes from, she, Genesis 49.10. The scepter shall not depart from Yehud and all the students of the Torah from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him will be the gatherings of the people. Okay. Right, so Shiloh is 345 regular, 48 ordinal. We've already talked about that. That comes to 393. Okay. Which we've already looked down here. The initial letters of Negara equal 393. Okay, the regular of that. So we've already made that connection. Moisha, 345. So that's one aspect of the Mashiach. That's the first letter here. You've got Yosef. Okay, Mashiach ben Yosef. This is the tip of the Yod. Is also, that's the same ordinal of, of Shiloh. We've got, I've just, I've mentioned this previously. David is 24, which 2 times 24 is 48. So we also see there's got to be unity between Mashiach ben David, Mashiach ben um Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben Dawid. We talked about the bird of redemption, which is the do dove, the Yona. So the body of the bird is Moshe, the left wing Yosef, the right wing David. Okay, and then we've got Srachbat Asher. So this is Srachbat Asher filled to the second filling. Okay, so each letter filled, Sarach, and then filled again. Okay. That comes to 293. So 293 plus 100. We talked about the um, until Shiloh comes equaling 574, which is 474 da'at plus 100. So that's where we get the 100 from. Okay. If we add the 293 and the 100 up, it comes to 393. So we know Sarah Bad Asher is an aspect of the Mashiach. Where do we get that 100 from from her? Well, there's two ways that we can get 100 for her. One, because she is completely and totally united with Yaakov. She was the one who told Yaakov, or Yosef Chai, and he was the one that blessed her with eternal life, rectifying to some degree the curse with which he cursed Rachel. Okay? So Yaakov, when Yaakov receives the additional vav from Eliyahu one of V, and his name is rectified five times in Tanakh, it's rectified with the letter vav, and five times Eliyahu Hanavi has a missing letter vav, so we know it's Eliyahu Hanavi that gives the truth to Yaakov. That comes to 53. Yaakov spelled ordinarily comes to 47. So we add them together, it comes to 100. 
So we can we can get the hundred from Yaakov. But however, there's one more verse that is linked to the sage is linked to Sarachbat Asha. And this is the verse of the wise woman to be found in 1 Samuel 10, 19. She calls herself Shalume Emune. Okay, peaceful and faithful. And the sages say this can be interpreted the completion of the faithful. Because this is connected obviously to Shalom, Shalume, peaceful, Shalom. Okay, but Shalom can also mean totally complete and perfect. So it means can mean whole. So she, she, um, she completed the counting of the faithful. Who were the faithful? The faithful were the 70 that went down of the household of Yaakov to Egypt. She was counted in amongst them. She was counted as, um, I think she was the only um, granddaughter. Well, she was the only female granddaughter mentioned which is Sarachbat Asha. She was mentioned going into the Exodus. She was also counted as those that were going into Eretz Israel. This is why we know she was blessed with eternal life. Even the Torah indicates this. So she's in the census going in as part of the 70, and the sages say she was the 70th. She completed the 70 in number. Shalume Emune, the, the, the completion of the faithful. Um, but she was also counted um, going into Eretz Israel the census in the in the wilderness okay so those two together can add to the 293 to, to equate 393 which is shiloh okay also this 487 plus 100 is 587 which is these words according to the sages are referring to Sarachbat asha i completed the number 17 the count of the faithful went down to egypt with yaakov the first occurrence of the number 587 in the Torah is Machol Malachto, all his work, all the work is being completed, okay? Which is, that's what we're wanting to get to out here. We're wanting to complete all this rectification for the six, this was talking about the six days of creation. We're really now talking about the six big days of creation, which are the 6,000 years of human history, the last 6,000 years of human history. We're wanting to complete all the work and somehow Sarah Bat Asher is a part of that completion, the completion of all his work that then leads on to the revelation of the Shabbat. And the Shabbat is very much associated with the 1,000 years of the Messianic reign the messianic kingdom and messianic, messianic period where we have completed all our work we are then can just um, bask in the glory of the name of yod he wow and serve him and nothing else beside him okay so she is very much associated with the completion of all his work okay all the work of creation which is ultimately a revelation of Mashiach and then ultimately a revelation of Mashiach ben Yosef, uh, uh, yod Hey wow -Heh. Okay, so we've got also 393s, binding sheaves, Me'alumim, me Alumim. Um, these are obviously referring to the dream of Yosef that he had when he was in the field, binding, there was all binding sheaves, and his sheaf arose and all the other sheaves bowed down to it. Okay. And this is really talking about the sheaf that Mashiach ben Yosef is gathering in, which is the lost house of Yosef. Okay, primarily the lost house of Yosef, but there are others beside. And then we've got the concept of Yeshu is also connect, connected. This is the spelling out of Yeshu. This is the curse with which Yeshu is cursed. It's obviously part of the divine will of yod heh -Wow to do such a thing. Okay, but this wonderful glorious truth why that had to happen why it had to be concealed in order to give us a work to do to reveal um the way that yod heh -Wow has chosen to perfect the entire of creation through the soul of mashiach ben yosef to graciously bestow upon us um <clears throat> that aspect of our own soul by the way because it is we our own soul is the, the, it's just illuminating our own soul the truth of our own soul and the truth of our own soul is connected to the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef because um part of our own soul is a, is to reveal the soul level of Yehida within us and that is connected to this whole system of perfection okay and like I said it, it, we, we graciously receive this revelation 
we do everything below to attain this revelation of perfection you know that aspect of our own soul that's connected to Yeshua who withstood the test of Satan in Satan's own territory the desert when he was baptized when he was mikvahed by John the Baptist and the dove of redemption the Holy Spirit descended upon him this is the soul of the Mashiach descended upon him took him into the wilderness and empowered him to withstand every single test of Hasatan and corrected our failings that were as a result of our experience in the desert which led to the building of the golden calf okay so it's complete rectification of this and 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 we did not attain that on our own but yod he Wawe has made a provision for us to attain that and like i say we do everything below and when we do everything below to attain that we by the grace of yod he Wawe, are given that that perfection is revealed within us that perfection that is the soul of Mashiach ben Yosef, that is Yeshua revealed within us, is given to us graciously. We did not merit that. It is um, simply, it's, it's given to us graciously. And I've explained why it's given to us graciously, because that we are waiting to be, we are waiting to receive a revelation of the name yod heh -Wahwe, and yod heh -Wahwe, an aspect of his name, is grace. We've got to be able, if we want to receive his name, we have got to receive the aspects of it. And one of the aspects of his grace. So we've got to actually experience that grace. How? Well, through um, receiving the illumination that our own souls are somehow connected to, this, to the, um, the power to overcome. You know, the, the, our own souls, it's receiving that revelation that our own souls... As an aspect of our own souls, our own Yechida, that's connected to Yeshua, that's revealed in Yeshua, it's incarnate in Yeshua, but somehow it's also the power of our own soul to withstand Satan and every test and temptation of Satan within Satan's own territory. Okay, and we we, we receive that illumination that that our own souls are connected to that. Um, why? Because this is our own soul, an aspect of our own soul that is the name yod heh Wawe, and he's perfect. He's able to withstand a Satan. And our own souls are, uh, we are made in his image. So there is something within us that, has, that is able to um, withstand Satan even in his own territory. And this is a wonderful thing to have revealed within us. Okay. Um, it's a gracious gift that is revealed within us, and it's the truth that's revealed within us also. It's, it's simply a, it's simply our own soul re fully revealed, our own potential fully revealed, and it's a gracious gift that he, that Yote Wawe who created us reveals that to us. Okay, and this is where we are we are the co-creators, aren't we? It's all glorious, you know. It's um, we we are, the Mashiach is out with, but the Mashiach is also within. You know, and we've got to we've got to maintain um, a balance between that reality, so that we're not oh well, I am the Mashiach. This because because this can cause insanity. You know, this 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 these, these revelations can cause insanity, and they're doing some people. You know, they they literally get Messiah complex where they actually are believing they are Mashiach, but it, it's not quite along those lines. It, it's it's. Um, it's to know that we all have that poten potential within us and that is what will ultimately be revealed and we will experience an incarnation of Mashiach i.e. Mashiach ben Dawid will come and he will be incarnated but he'll also illuminate within us our own soul potential and we will all be united as one under one shepherd and that is a true leader a true leader is the one that reveals our potential within us okay and this is what we are desiring and and uh, desiring for we want to be guided you know like these evil shepherds down here they want to make you believe that you are just a virus transmitter and um that that you are frail you know um uh, and and that humans are frail and um 
you know, vulnerable and weak and ill and things like that. You know, the evil shepherds do not reveal this potential within you. They suppress that because they are afraid to reveal the truth. Their, their job is to conceal the truth. Mashiach is to uh, reveal the truth. So binding sheaves, Yeshu is glorious, but this is descending to Erev Rav um, doctrination and this whole concept of Yeshu, to which is found only in rabbinical Judaism, is disgusting. It's, it's the most disgusting, exiled aspect of glory of the name yod heh wah -Wah. It's, 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 it's it, the, the glory, the, 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 the glory that I've just spoken about, this within Judaism has descended to the deepest, darkest, filthiest pit possible. And it's from there that we will, from this place of double concealment, it will become a double revelation. And we will truly know by the grace of God we have received this revelation because there is nothing that we can do on our own. Um, we, we do everything we can on our own, but ultimately it will be a gracious gift. And this is why um, it mentions he will pour out a spirit of grace, you know, in order for us to receive these revelations, you know. Um, may that day come soon. And we will all, to a certain degree, even believers in Yeshua have got it wrong a lot. Because the concept of Yeshua, Mashiach ben Yosef, has descended into Greco-Roman mindset. And this is just as bad in certain ways. But it's very sad that, um, that the, the crown has fallen the furthest. And the, Yeshua is really the crown, the Yechida. And he has fallen the furthest. He's fallen the furthest into the most disgusting doctrine to the, the, the most disgusting, lie-filled, Erev Rav doctrine um, that is within rabbinical Judaism. But they also hold the key. Wherever there's a concealment, there's also the potential for revelation. And the Jews will be the ones that will reveal, um, or the Hebrews, I should say. The Hebrews will be the ones, or B'nai Israel will be the ones to reveal this truth. And the faithfulness with which yod heh -Wah has been faithful to the lost house of Israel through Yeshua and through the suffering servant. Okay, so this is another wonderful appellation of Mashiach, line of the tribe of Yehuda, 300 plus 93 ordinarily, uh, and comes to 393. Both those numbers are highly significant. This is highly significant. And then we've got the initial letters, Negara. Okay, let's go back. So I hope you've learned something from that. It's all glorious. But like I say, we've got five aspects of the Mashiach that come against the five aspects of the serpent. So just as I've said, we've got Mashiach ben David. Well, the highest point is Mashiach ben Yosef. Okay. And you know when I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's descended the worst into rabbinic, ju, rabbinical Judaism. Right, let me get this straight because I am a little bit... I, I've, I've, I've thought about this a lot in recent days. And um, I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to come across somebody who hates Jews or hates Judaism. I, I definitely don't. I am, I, am a, I am who I am today. I am alive today on account of all the faithfulness of the Jews to the name yod heh wah -Heh, Because I would have been completely lost. You know, um, I certainly couldn't have found the truth just looking at the texts within Christianity. I couldn't have been where I am today. Um, the salvation for me came. I know about Yeshua from going, I, I mean I abandoned my faith in Yeshua based on all the lies that I found within Christianity and I went towards Judaism. Okay, so I cracked heads with the air of Raph when I did. It hurt a lot. And I mean it hurt a lot. Okay, so I have no love for air of Raph. And all those Jewish people that want to cling to air of Raph mentality, I, honestly, there's no love in my heart for them people. I hate I hate them on, an, on, a, on account of the concealment. But I don't hate Jews themselves. I just hate the whole Erev Rav mentality. I hate it. As much as I hate Greco-Roman and as much as I hate all the forces of exile, the Amalekites and everything, it, it, it's, it, the, to me it's just desecrating the holy name of yod heh wah -Wah. Um, and it's in it, it's calling the concealment revelation it's just absolutely an horrific state that we're in we're in a horrific state of evil um 
but no I absolutely 100 want to make this very clear because I'm a little bit afraid you know because I do speak I speak and I'm uh, I'm thinking to myself I hope people don't think that I hate, I hate Jews because this is absolutely honestly that would be something that would greatly 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 pain my soul I don't I'm not like one of these Judophiles you know what I call Judophiles you know you get like evangelistic Christians oh we love Israel oh we love the Jews I'm thinking to myself no way Jose I am not in that category of people um you know I don't I I have an unconditional love for Israel and for the Jewish people I have an unconditional love but I also have a conditional love and when I'm seeing and behaving like Erev Rav um, no I, the, the the conditional love kicks in I'm thinking what are you doing you know this is unacceptable you you you're not you desecrate in the name of your hey Huawei and you think that you're 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 sanctifying his name with these lies and this delusion and you're not even you're not even doing anything to work against it and I'm, I'm just thinking to myself I'm, I'm not seeing my Jewish brothers in this mess but I do know at the heart of this these are these they're my Jewish brothers and I, and I, I, brothers and sisters and I, I long to see them revealed as the Hebrews that they are not dominated over by these exilic forces okay no more than I would like I, I hate to see G, G, um, you know believes in Yeshua true believers in Yeshua dominated over by the evil of um, Edom the Greco-Roman mindset it's just a foul you know keeping Christmas and eating bacon you've of the house of israel this is unacceptable to me it's just so vile it's just the depth of of exile to which we're exiled and it's the way that the serpent has deceived everybody and it's the way that our knowledge of the mashiach is so distorted it's offensive to me but i don't hate jews i i have a a, 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 a con I love Jews. I'm, I, I am not who I am today without the fact that I've gone towards my Jewish brothers and sisters and learned everything that I've learned from them. The whole, um, the whole work that they've done, um, the whole, the Torah that they've revealed, the light that they have revealed in this world and shown. I've received that light that they have shown. It's glorious and it's wonderful and it's brought me to life. So no, I don't hate the Jews. I am indebted to their faithful because of their faithfulness and because of the light that i've received and they've really illuminated my soul uh you know i have suffered <laughs> i have cracked heads with the area of rav aspect and it hurt me and, I, and 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 it really did and nearly destroyed me in fact by the grace of god go i um it was is it, 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 it something very very painful and i don't like to see it i don't like to see it and i express my uh, hatred of it um, but by no means associated that with hatred of Jews I love I love the Jews and I love Israel I don't like Israel in this state of exile no I don't I've been 20 times I absolutely I love its dust I love Yerushalayim but I couldn't drive I once went I couldn't go um all the things I've done in order to make sure that if I'm driving from one end of Israel to the other, I've got to go into Jer Jerusalem and things like that. I, I, I utterly and absolutely love the land of Israel. Like I said, I've been 20 times. I've taken my children, uh, you know, over 10 times. Um, my younger children, my older children, uh, a, li a little bit less. Um, but, um, you know, certainly we've been there a lot, and I've and I, and I, and, I, and I love it. But there's things I just don't like about it. I don't like the fact that the Erev Rav are in control of it, and and and, and the Erev Rav lies dominate over Israel. You know, and bring nothing but separation and elitism, and put them in power. These evils, this evil serpent is in power, and it's something that I don't like. I don't like because it's lies that are in power. Why? It's because they don't recognise Yosef. They don't recognise the faithfulness with which your Hevav has been faithful to the house of Yosef. And because they don't, they're liars. And they conjure up every kind of doctrine to prove that they're right. These liars are right and, and, and maintain Erev Rav power. There should be unity between the brothers. Yosef should be revealed. And I await the day when he is revealed. And also the land of Israel. It's, it's, the, the Jewish people are predominantly from the house of Judah. The, the land of Israel does not belong to just Yehuda. It's simple fact. And I hate the lies. Where the desert, the, 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 you know, they're making out as if yod heh is only being faithful to Yehuda. yod heh will be faithful to Yosef. Get this straight. He will return Yosef to his land. 
it is not just belong to Yehuda. And these powers that be at this time, these Erevrev powers that are liars, that won't even permit that what Yod Heva, who Yod Heva has been faithful to, into returning the lost of the house of Israel in, and to, to giving them access to his name. You know, and yet I, I, I long to go live in the er er Eretz Israel, but the powers that be, the Erev Rav, that dominate with their lies, that say that only Yehuda is entitled to this land, is total lies from start to finish. It is absolutely of the serpent. But the Mashiach will come and he will overthrow that. And he's coming soon to reveal himself. Get ready. Because um, you will, we, you know, we'll all be sorry. You know, we we will all we'll all we'll all have fallen short, but these are these are things that I can't stand. I can't stand the lies, and I can't stand with the way that Erev Rav dominates the Jewish people at this time and the land of Israel at this time. I hate it. And that's what I hate, but I don't hate the Jews, and I certainly don't hate Israel. I certainly don't hate the Jews, and I certainly don't hate Israel. I, I love 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 love. But I don't like the, ex the the forces of exile that held them captive. No, I hate them. My, I've, my entire life is devoted to exposing uh, every single lie, every single obscurity, every single concealment of the name yod heh wow -Hey in order to reveal his name. So don't get me wrong on this matter. Um, you know, I love the Jews with all my heart, soul and strength. They are the absolute apple of my father's eye. Um, and I am aware of this and you know I am so proud of the way that they have maintained faithfulness to the name yod -Heh -Wah -Wah. I am so relieved in my soul that they have treasured his name in the way and honoured his name and kept the commandments you know I can't say that but I am so proud and so happy and so joyful that they have and on and, and all the joy that they've brought my father through all the tests that where they've been tested and found faithful you know it's uh, very humbling to me um, the Jews are incredible and, and very inspirational to me in every way possible they're um, they are to me in my eyes they are um, a revelation of the name Yote Wawi himself you know and it's and it's glorious um, so when, I, when I'm talking about these Erev Rav and I'm mentioning about rabbinic Judaism and stuff like that I'm really just talking about the evil it needs to be talked about okay so what else have we got 462 here we go this is phenomenal the Mashiach of yod heh wow -Hey also comes to 384 plus 78 ordinarily we talked about this in last lesson didn't we this is unbelievable um, we talked about the garments and how that's related to the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef and how we can betray um, we can be betrayed by our outer garments that don't reveal to us the truth of who we are like what I was talking about this part of our soul that withstood Satan in his own territory we're not, we're not aware of that we are not awakened up to that but it's there we are made and that is how we were made Okay, by Yod Heh Wow -He himself, it's within us. Okay, 462. There we go. It's un it's wonderful stuff. 78 is two times Moshe, but not only that, Moshe itself, you know, this is 345, which is exact gematric of Shiloh, plus 39 ordinarily of Moshe comes to 384. Okay, 384 is 8 times 48. Um, 8 times Yosef. Let me just check that. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. So it's unbelievable. It's all unbelievable. So we know that there's a connection between Yosef and Moshe. And the whole concept of Mashiach ben Yosef and the whole concept of Shiloh that comes against these forces of very frank. Right. And the sun of mercy shall rise with healing its wings for you who fear my name. So this is messianic, isn't it? This is the son of mercy and we want the healing. Healing from what? From this savage evil plague that's been unleashed against humanity. You know, my uh, ex-husband at this time. Um, I mean, I fought COVID myself. My ex-husband was in ICU a couple of weeks ago. He's ended up having a stroke. He's very ill. I'd be very, um, I'd be very happy if you could pray for him. His name is David John. Um, 
is in, is, is, in, is in a very sorry state. He's in a very sorry state, very debilitated by it. He ended up having a stroke and ICU. Very, very, very nearly died. Uh, needed a lot of intervention to keep him alive. Um, he survived. He's, he's in need of now rehabilitation. His absolutely body has been slaughtered by this evil plague. Um, and he's one of many, many, many hundreds of thousands of millions of people that have um, suffered to this degree. Uh, it's wickedness. It's pure wickedness that we are facing. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a big tragedy. Um, but anyway, I took in the Talith. Uh, I had a friend that came to visit me from Israel for six, for six months, a wonderful, wonderful Jewish uh, young man. Uh, or my friend, um, a lot younger than me, but he helped me when I was living in the Jewish community um, to uh, help me understand various aspects of Judaism and various mitzvah and things like that, commandments. Um, and he came and stayed with me for six months and it was absolutely wonderful, a wonderful young man. Um, this is 384 as well, so I'll get that out first, it's connected all to this. What I was going to say is he left me his talith and I took the talith and I laid it on me ex-husband, went to the hospital to see him and uh, I laid it over my ex-husband and said, do you mind if I put this on? Um, I said, because there is a promise that, um, you know, with the talith, this is obviously related to the talith of the Mashiach. Um, but there is some of that in the little is they all so I even think these holy people he was a very holy man who very very holy very very and beautiful young Israeli Jew who came and he left his talit like I say bought a new talit or he hadn't uh, brought a new talit with him and he left me with it with the talit and every um, Shabbat I blessed the children and covered them up with the talit and things like that so I laid it on my ex-husband and I'm hoping that he is going to make full recovery but he has got a long way to go in terms of rehabilitation uh, we have got a major fight on against these evil forces you know and um, they won't win by the way <laughs> They won't win. The the Mashiach will prevail over this. The Mashiach will prevail. The good will overwhelm the evil. Okay. The evil is temporary. The good is permanent and everlasting. You've got to always remember that. So we're all going through these challenges, aren't we? We're all facing some really, really wicked um, things at this time. So it's, it's actually my son's birthday. Uh, it was called Shilo. I named him. I, I, you know, I, I named him um, Shilo. I didn't even know what I was naming him. We were um, one of the times when I visited Israel. I was pregnant. The first time I ever visited Israel, I was actually pregnant with me, me baby. And I thought, when I go to Israel, I'll get an inspiration for his name. Uh, okay, so. Um, I'm there in this park in Jerusalem and my husband who's ill now, my ex-husband who's ill now, was talking away to this Romanian Jew um, and my ex-husband said, what's the name of your son? He had a son with him. He says, he's, he's called Shiloh and uh, my ex-husband didn't recognise the name. He says, is, it, is, it, is there an English version? He said, Shiloh. He says, all right, the blessing to Judah. He did, he, the blessing to Judah, he, he, knew, he knew of, of it being in Bereshith 49.10 until when Shiloh comes in, he also knew that it was one of the names of Mashiach. Um, so when we had that conversation, I I had the inspiration because I was waiting for a name. I, I thought to myself, I, I, I was, it was the first time in Israel, I, I, I would like to be, I'd like to receive an inspiration for his name. And as soon as that incident happened, I was a little bit, mm, it's, it's not a common name, is it? I would I would have rather have had a, I, I didn't exactly fall in love with the name straight away, but I sort of had a full, funny inspiration within me, you know, that is going to be the name of your son. And I was um, thinking, well, I couldn't receive it fully at first because it was like, well, it's not a common name. And people might think, you know, what will people think, you know, naming him Sheila? I didn't know anybody called Sheila. I didn't know uh, this name. I'd, I'd, never, I'd never really heard it, um, you know. So I were a little bit tentative, but he got called Sheila, Sheila Nathanel, uh, Nathaniel. So um, I got the name from him I was to in Israel and then with the circumstances with which I got it and then all these years later I mean I was just a believer in Yeshua you know I started to keep the Shabbat at that time because I'd been um, 
you know, walking up to, to the Torah. Um, but I was still, you know, very much a messianic believer and things like that. And I never, ever envisaged the journey that I would ultimately go on towards the Jews and abandoning faith and then coming back and then understanding all these terms of Shiloh. I was just, I, I didn't even want the name, to be honest. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, it's a little bit. And when I was telling my family, just, I mean, you'd honestly... Um, I can remember my uh, mother-in-law saying, I, I won't be calling him that, I, I'll have to call him Nathaniel. And anyway, they've all fallen in love with the name, obviously. And it, do, it, it definitely does suit the name, Sheila. But um, now when I'm coming and doing all these, and it's his birthday today, and he can't even go see his dad in hospital. And, you know, these are the, this is the evil that we face, and none of us have escaped it. Uh, none of us. So this young man... and. It's quite hard to say, but you know, we are facing this evil and we have got to do something about it. Um, we have got to expose it for what it is and get very serious because it's taking good people out of this world and it's depriving people. Um, like my son can't even go see his father um, and, and I begged and pleaded with the nurses and they won't let him go in and see, even though he's got over the COVID. And he's managed to fight the COVID off and he's out of ICU and things like that. He's very debilitated. I myself will be going and visiting, but she, they won't let my son go and visit his own father um, on his birthday, which is today. And, uh, you know, we are facing real evil and we've got to take a stand against it. And the only power that we have got to stand against this is the name of yod Hair wow Hair, And uh, we have got to do everything that we can because... Um, this is so uh it, it's affected us all and and we've got to unite against these forces and really get to the bottom of it and make these forces accountable you know there's a lot of blood that's been spilled and i i i'm very clear about this i think we should avenge that blood in a good way and the only way that i can find that's acceptable compensation for this suffering is a revelation of the name yod hair wow hair you know, so all these things are very close to my heart. Um, it's difficult times that we are having to endure and none of us is, is escaping this um, this pain. It's, 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 it's very real and, and we've got to put up a fight because if we don't, these forces will just um, dominate as far as we, we allow them to dominate. But thankfully we have got the name Yod here, well here who fights for us okay so back to it so we've got Srachfeld is also connected to this okay she comes up all the time I feel very much connected to Sarah but Asha myself um, I've talked about that in previous teachings I'm not going to go on about that now but we've all got an aspect of Sarah within us just as we've all got an aspect of Mashiach ben Yosef just as we've all got an aspect of Mashiach ben Dawid you know, this is something that's illuminated within my soul very, very clearly. I, I honestly, I've had some incredible experiences whilst I was in Is Israel and um, things that has been connected to this whole concept of Srachbat Asher. But like I say, we have got aspects of every aspect of Mashiach and every aspect of the name yod heh -Wah -Wah within us. We just need, by the grace of God, to have that revealed. And it will come. And it's all glorious. Right. For in this manner the king's virgin's daughters dressed. So this is connected to this here um, in some way, I do believe. Um, let's wait a minute. Yeah, my brain worked functioning quite well then. So this is two times this. And in what way were the king's virgin daughters dressed? Well, they had on the Ketoneth Pasim, the coat of many colours. Okay, so if you read that, you'll go find it's exactly the same word used for the coat of many colours that Yisrael, Yaakov, gave to Yosef. It's all connected and it's all glorious. Okay, let's have a look. What else have we got? For your thoughts are not my thoughts, 231. So 2 times 231, we see is related to this and this and this. And then we've got, then the Lord would speak to Moshe face to face. This is the, we want to attain a face to face relationship with yod Hey wow Hey, just as Moshe did. And, and just as um, what's synonymous also, the, this is almost an in, impersonal um, or an indirect 
face-to-face -face relationship through the concept of the Mashiach as an intermediary. But we've also got what's called Panim Be Panim, face-to-face, and it's and that's connected to Mashiach Ben Yosef, that brings us into a personal relationship with Yod Heh Wow Heh. And that's why Christians talk about a personal relationship with Yod Heh Wow Heh, and Jewish people talk about an impersonal relationship through the Rebbe or through the um, Rabbi or through Moshe. It's more of an indirect, but we've got to bring them both together. There is, we've got to have access to every aspect of the name Yod Heh Wow Heh. Okay, not limit ourselves in any way. We want a full revelation of the name Yod Heh Wow Heh within us. So both of these aspects, face to face through Moshe and face to face with our own personal relationship to Yod Heh Wow Heh, independent of anything else. And then 231, this is Aramaic for leper, and Mashiach is called a leper. There's reasons why. I've done lots of teachings about the leprous Mashiach, very, very good uh, teachings about that. Like a lion. Keep, um, you know, these, these are talking about, normally it's translated, my hands and feet were pierced, but the actual word is like a lion, my hands and feet like a lion. Really, it's meaning they are pierced, because, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, it's not beyond our imagination to understand what that might mean. It looks like your hands have been bitten by, by lions, you know, which... I think definitely connects in some way to Yeshua, okay, and in the fact that he was crucified and he had nails put through his hands and stuff like that. So 231, to me, there's a definite connection, 231, to all these concepts, the leper especially, the one that did have his lap, you know, uh, he appears as cursed, but his curse, he carried our curses, didn't he? he carried our sicknesses and our, our, our illnesses and things. Okay, for 70 years like the days of one king, so I think that's five times um, 231. Uh, yes, it is. Five times 231. There. You ask whose son this youth is. So again, five times 231. And this is talking about Mashiach ben David after his comeback, after he slaughtered Goliath. Okay. Pretty much, pretty sure that that's what that's talking about. And then... This is another wonderful, wonderful concept. And he called to Moshe, Yikra el Moshe. That comes to 693, which is 3 times 291. If we add that to the ordinal, 693 to the ordinal, 190 comes to 801, which is 9 times 89, 9 times the evil inclination. The, the Mashiach is to overcome the evil inclination, to overcome the power of the serpent. Okay, the ASAP to transform it from evil into good. Okay, from delusion into truth, from concealment into revelation, from darkness into light. Okay, so it's a process that we've got to go through. And then this one, then the corn shall look at it, and behold, the Taharath. Okay, so that comes to an ordinal of 231. So we can see it's connected up to here, the concept of the Mashiach being the leper. Who Taharath, it is leprosy comes to 772 which is 2 times 386 2 times Yeshua I've gone over that a lot I did actually want to just do a deep dive into this because this is very messianic this word Waikra. let's go and have a look why we've got this and he called to Moshe and the Lord spoke, spoke to him from the tent of meeting saying so that's the regular and the ordinal of that verse. It comes to 1776, which is two times 888. And 888 is Hamashiach spelt out, the Mashiach. So we know there's something very, very important about this. And if we look at the actual way it's written in the Torah, we'll notice that the little, the Aleph is little. Wayikra, it's a little Aleph. And there's reasons why. This is talking about Moshe, like this, uh, humbling himself. Because um, he didn't want to put that Waikra call to him, did yod heh wow -he. Okay. Um, so he diminished himself when he wrote the actual Torah scroll. But there's obviously Aleph is also represents yod heh wow -he hidden in this world. And um, we've got to take that hiddenness and transform it into revelation, like I keep going on over and over again. Eventually, the Aleph can represent one. But it also can represent a thousand. And eventually this little Aleph will become the thousand. Um, Moshe is called Aleph Godol. The big 
Aleph, which equals a thousand. And this is like the light that she shone from Moshe's face. It's not known as the thousand lights of Bina. Okay, the thousand lights of understanding. So eventually, Vayikra, this word Vayikra, will eventually become Vayikra or Vayikra with an Aleph Gadol, and it will equal 1316 which is equal to Mashiach ben David plus Mashiach ben Yosef, that equals a thousand. Okay, so a thousand is very much connected to the concept of Mashiach, because it's Mashiach ben David plus Mashiach ben Yosef. It's also adding on Yeshu, the curse through which Yeshua is cursed. Okay, and then you've got this word here, Hamaoroth, the luminaries, which are Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David. And this is when it's spelt rectified, when the two vavs are added in the Torah, those two vavs are missing, that represents the truth. We are lacking in truth regarding the concept of Mashiach. Um, so rectified comes to 658, 73 or ordinarily, 731 normally, uh, sorry, rectified and both together, which is exactly the same as Moshe and Yeshua. Um, also Nekmath. Um, revenge, I've talked about the revenge we need revenge for the blood, spilt blood of the servants, you know Mashiach Yeshua is, is, is spilt blood, he's never been fully re, re, um, um, revenged he has suffered, he's suffering today with us in this exile, so is Moshe, and there's a lot of blood being spilt because of the forces of Erev Rav, not just with this Negara, this evil plague, but all the ways in which they have caused death and destruction through evil, through ignorance, through arrogance, and this got to be revenged. We've got to cry out for revenge, because what does revenge ultimately mean? It ultimately, we want, we don't want revenge in more blood spill, right? This we want compensated for the loss that we've suffered. We want compensated for our suffering. The only compensation that we can, we we, we truly desire is a revelation of the name Yod Hey Wahweh. Is the ultimate compensation for everything. Is the ultimate rectification of everything. When we receive that revelation of the name Yod Hey Wahweh, we are really receiving a revelation and illumination of our own souls within our own bodies. Okay? That's the ultimate revenge. Why? Because when the power of our own soul is fully revealed within us, and we are no longer selfish, egocentric, um, self obsessed people. There will be no more bloodshed and hate. There'll be love because we'll have finally we'll have reason to love ourselves. Okay, and we'll be able to love our neighbours as ourselves. However, as surely as I live and as the glory of the Lord fills the earth, um, so that comes to a regular and ordinary one thousand three hundred and uh, sorry one thousand three hundred sixteen. This is what we want, don't we? We want the glory of the Lord to fill the earth. You know. Oops, got back. 